Good morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life. I'm so glad to have you here spending the day with us. We are home from piano and now I'm labeling up the jars of beans. If you missed my last day in the life vlog, I canned beans, kidney beans and pinto beans. And so now I'm just labeling those and getting those down onto the shelves in the basement. I'm also here in the kitchen with Maria. She's working on her math. Uh, close by in case uh, she needs to ask me some questions and I'm going to be making some caramel corn. Right? Did you get two to erase it? Off the ground. Oh, wow. Ow. Whoa. Since the microwave that we currently have is very tiny, it really doesn't work to do the microwave um, caramel popcorn, so I'm going to put it in the oven. I'll put it in for an hour, taking it out every 15 minutes to stir it around. Now, I do think that it's best if you have dark brown sugar and dark corn syrup. It gives it a much richer flavor. I didn't have that. I just used light brown sugar and light corn syrup, and it's going to be delicious. All right, it's actually 250. I just checked. Well, now there's no hands. I was just going to say all the piranhas have come. <laughs> this is just out after an hour. Every 15 minutes I take it out and I stir it. I like to use a spatula so I can get anything that has like dripped from the bottom, flip it over, and gradually it all gets coated. And we start eating it. Now normally I would flip this out onto wax paper or parchment paper or something. But we're going to eat it before you do. You think so? Oh. Well, you better flip it. I think I need to flip it so it can cool and get real crispy. Mm -hmm. Ah! Okay. I should have flipped it right away, you guys. Because now Sorry. it's wanting to stick in the pan. See what you guys did? <laughs> <laughs> I think you were the first one over there. All right, there we go. Now we'll let that cool, and now it'll get crispy. And then we'll break it apart and store it in an ice cream bucket. The arms are just coming around me. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. We have a storm front that is moving in. We're supposed to start getting a bunch of rain this afternoon, or evening, bedtime, sometime. And the wind is just getting so strong, it actually knocked that metal chair over right there. It just, I just heard this big quack, and stuff is just blowing everywhere. The wood smoke is straight, straight out of the east. It is crazy. I hope the chickens make their way back to the coop so we can go close them up. I think they're trying right now. <laughs> well, they're going on the wrong side of the door. If one steps in, the other ones will follow. Hmm. Well, maybe not. You know, a little bit ago, I was telling you how windy it is. <laughs> it's still super windy. Our power actually went off. It went off for about maybe, 
maybe 30 minutes. It wasn't real long, but it kind of flickered on, off, on, off, on, off, and then all of a sudden off. So Warren called that in and then, yeah, now the power's back on. I'm glad because I'm in the kitchen and I'm getting the chili ready. So this is the chili that I made the other day, remember? And I just popped it in the fridge, let it sit there. Chili always tastes better when the flavors can go through it for a couple of days. I am boiling up some water. I've got two cups of noodles. This is the spoon I used to stir the chili. As soon as I get the noodles done and into the chili, we're gonna head off to the library, I think. They close in an hour and 15 minutes. So can I get these done? Can we drive over there? I hope so. <laughs> we have some things that we have to return. Mm -hmm. my well remember i was saying how windy it was all day the rain has now started i mean it's been raining for a couple of hours but it was just more like sprinkling and then raining but now it's really lightning i don't know if the camera's capturing that it was just hailing a minute ago i still see a few little hailstones on the patio here All right, well, what we're gonna do is get the TV turned off and I have two books. I picked up this book from the library. It was a Newbery Honor book and it's called Swift Rivers. I haven't even read the back to see what it's about, but I think we're gonna start that. Um, my other thought was to start The Great Fire. Uh, this is on the, the Great Chicago Fire, I'm pretty sure. And I thought that that one sounded good. Peter was like, yeah, I don't really wanna read that. So anyway, I am going to get Joe out of the bathtub. I don't like that with all the thunder and lightning and everything. And get Maria, we're gonna put on our pajamas and settle in for some reading. But he thanked them and shook his head with determination. He and grandfather had cut the tall wild hay of that meadow year after year. This afternoon, I am going to make a recipe out of cookbook volume two, Frosted Pumpkin Gems on page 55. This recipe is super easy it starts with a cake mix and then you just add a few other ingredients to it these go in the oven at 350 degrees for just about 10 minutes they're really quick Well, this is unfortunate. I've taken my beaters in and out a few times and look what just happened. So it appears I am having problems with this. I took them out, put them back in, took them out, put them back in, and it's not helping at all. That is a bummer. I've had this <laughs> mixer for probably 20 years. Maybe that's why that's happening, huh? Well, it looks like I'll mix up the rest of this by hand. I, it's basically done. I just wanted to kind of whip it a little bit more. Right. I just did the same thing I did the other day when I made the cream cheese frosting for on the banana cake and I just cut a little hole and I'm just kind of piping this on in a little round fashion here. It's really fast and the first one I messed up so I had to eat that one. <laughs> just had to. I probably should have set these on a tray first because then I could have put them in the refrigerator so that the frosting would set up and the cake would um, 
get cold. That's honestly, that's how I like to eat these. It's cold. <laughs> um, but I wasn't thinking about that. So I'm going to have to transfer these to a little tray now. Probably like a cookie sheet would work out just great. All right, the last pan of pumpkin gems are in the oven. And we're finding that they want to like almost stick to the little paper. Anyway, that was kind of a bummer. Did you want to try one, Joe? No. All right, well, let me just show you what I mean by this then. Let's see if I can get a good, it's kind of blurry. But see how if you do it too fast, look what happens. I'm just too close to it right now. But a lot of it ends up sticking to the paper. So with that, just be prepared for that. Maybe as they um, set up or once I refrigerate them, maybe that won't happen. I don't remember it happening before. I'm going to get started rolling out the balls of meat for the Smash Big Macs. Now the rain has stopped, which I'm very happy about, which means it's going to be nice to cook out on the Blackstone. And one thing is that if you are like just new to cooking with venison, now this is ground beef, and I put this into tepid water. I would say it wasn't cold, it wasn't warm. It's been in there for like an hour. It's already completely thawed. I'm pretty sure it's thawed all the way through. Um, that would not happen with venison. Venison being that it is so lean, it's all like muscle. It takes a long time to thaw. So just kind of be aware if you are used to thawing beef and then you want to start and now you have to start thawing venison, you're going to need more time. Along with the Smash Big Macs, I'm going to do both of these bags of french fries. There are six of us tonight, and I am the only girl. <laughs> we swapped. Maria went over to the other house, and Peter's friend came here, and so it is just neat with all a whole bunch of boys, and I'm pretty sure they're going to want a lot of fries. Okay, I have a little bit of Big Mac sauce left here in the fridge, but it's not enough. So I am just going to add to it. And the Big Mac sauce recipe is in cookbook number one on page 23. So a half a cup of mayo, two tablespoons of French dressing, four teaspoons of sweet pickle relish, a teaspoon of white vinegar. I am going to pour it in here just so I don't spill. And then some sugar and some salt. Scant teaspoon of sugar and an eighth teaspoon of salt. I also need a little bit of white onion minced. And I will get to that in just a minute. I'm a little bit in a hurry right now because we have to leave about 45 minutes. And so I want to get this done and all mixed up so I can get out to the Blackstone and get that going, get the meat going. I'm going to say it needs just a couple drips more of vinegar. All right, this is the knife I used to cut the the pickles, it's not the greatest onion knife, but it'll do. It will do. I only need a tablespoon of onion. I'm gonna do a good, look at that. Is that a tablespoon? It is in my book. That is going to flavor that sauce really well. I'm gonna let that sit there. Smash Big Macs. I used some just seasoning and some extra pepper. I have these two and a half ounce balls on the Blackstone. Someone gave me the idea of using this as my like taco holder. So we're gonna give that a try. I have a lot of these. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I've got my cast iron pan to use as my smasher. I've got my tortillas. This time I'm using smaller tortillas. I'm using the fajita sized tortillas this time. I think that's gonna work better. Last time I used the taco size. They were a little bit on the big side. More than that? Nope, that's good. Basically until, with this size, until you kind of just see the meat sort of squeezing to the edge. This definitely requires some muscle. <laughs> Is it getting hot? Mm -hmm. Too hot? Not yet, it's not. Calluses help. I see. Oh, it's drizzling out. Oh my gosh, it is. It is. Welcome to <laughs>
Yuck. Spring in Wisconsin is pretty much crappy. <laughs> pretty much. The weather stick is not happy. Not happy at all today. Approaching the end of April and still... When this pile of wood is gone, we're shutting the wood burner down for the year. So you have to pray for a warm May or... I'm or I'm going to be cold. Any, I'm not burning <laughs> any more wood this year. This, this will be year. it, huh? Yeah. This isn't that much. This is what, maybe this time of year? What is that going to be? Barely two weeks? Two weeks. It it'll will get be? Us, it'll get us to the end of April. Okay. Then May will just shiver. <laughs> Good morning everyone, I came with Warren to, well, what he calls checking water. All right, let's go around the marsh. Are you gonna tell us anything? Well, I'm just slowing it down. The flood is almost done. Why are you flooding? It's gonna get so cold uh, the next three, four days. Every night it's gonna get down, uh, actually into the teens with mm -hmm. a wind. And when it gets that cold, the sprinklers cannot protect the cranberry buds. And right now the buds are tight enough where they can handle being flooded, but they're too tender to try to protect them just with sprinklers. So flooding is our only option right now to uh, protect them. Time number four? Is this flood number four? Flood number four, <gasps> yeah. We flooded twice in February, once in March, and now this is the fourth flood trying to protect them. The weather's just been up and down. It gets super warm, then it gets super cold, and everything is starting to grow, and that super cold will kill the crop if you don't do something. So this is what we're doing. Even Can you believe, I mean, it's sticking out of the water right now, but <clears throat> the leather leaf weed is actually in bloom. Oh my gosh, yeah, right already? There. The weed, yeah, see, I see it's it. all the white blossoms. All the little white blossoms. Oh my goodness. So what he means by flooding is the water that's in the reservoir there. He's sending it down that ditch right there. And then it goes under the road through dog legs. Into, no, through oh no, kids. sorry, sorry. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> through bulkheads into each individual cranberry bed. And you can see there that it's um, flooded up. There's another one flooded. I had all my boards stacked the year. Yeah, stacked so beautifully. Now we got Redo them all. Nothing, no obstructions. See right here, you get these. Uh huh. making sure there's not a rock on that bottom board. So now you're stopping the water yep. so from continuing. What I want to do is hold the water in each of these tiers. These actually need a couple more inches of water. That's why I still have water coming from the main. These are all good, so these don't need any more. And what I'm, the reason I'm looking at these and flipping them around, the board will have a natural curve to it, and I like to have the 
the cupping facing out so the water pressure makes it want to seal and then mm -hmm. you got to look for anything that's wrong with the board so if you have it in the wrong way it creates a leak so you kind of have to look at each board and then I got these giant boards which are really a pain I should probably cut them in half but I haven't So there's enough water on this cranberry bed. Everything's under and protected, so he's going to stop the flow of water. Hi. Hi. What's up? stock still. There must be a nest close by. I wonder if that's the male and the females on the nest. I wonder. Yeah, I think those are buffalo heads. Are you getting it? Yeah. I can't tell if it's clear though. Well, for the viewing audience, it's a pair of loons. Oh, and then oh, and they're back. The other one, yeah. yeah, they're back for the year. Mm -hmm. We we've oh, had loons for dove under. probably forty years. We've had loons here. Well, Warren and I are back in from that drive around the property and checking water and everything. Um, he also wanted to uh, show me kind of some updates on the spot where we're thinking that we're going to put. The ice house, that's what we, that's what he call, has called it forever and ever and ever, the ice house. Um, most recently though, we've been joking that it might be our retirement home, right? Uh, anyway, Peter and I are gonna work on the final edits, right? Yeah. The final edits. They thought they had it finalized yesterday, then they were showing their friends last night at church and saw that there was a mistake. Yep. So I'm going to, we're gonna look through it. I'm gonna show them how to fix that mistake and then we're just gonna be working on schoolwork here. I guess, I mean, this is kind of like schoolwork, isn't it? Because we're learning video editing. <laughs> As our school year kind of winds down, things become just a little bit more lax, would you say, Maria? Mm -hmm. Just a little more lax. You know what that means, right? Relaxed. Relaxed, yeah, okay. Um, and so this is a book that we start. I started reading to the kids a long time ago probably in the winter sometime. Peter really is not all that interested. We have like two chapters left. And so Maria is gonna work on an embroidery project that she has going. Let's look at that. So she's gonna be working on this embroidery project. What kind of bird? It's a uh, red and black bird. The, my plan for the talent show is going to be sewing. So I'm like doing sewing, embroidery, and pot holders. So she has a few projects to wrap up before tomorrow, which is when the talent show is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to read to her. We're going to wrap up these last two chapters. We are working at finishing up lessons as well, um, but we also just kind of tend to do... I, I start to kind of fall back on my sort of unschooling roots a little bit, where like every everything in life is always learning. And so whatever we might be doing, whether it's I'm helping Peter with editing a video or they're baking or doing something kind of new in the kitchen or working on art and how they're going to design their display table, just kind of all of those things. So uh, yeah, we're just kind of having a little bit of a relaxed day here and let's read. Remember all of my talk earlier today, we were going to be reading, we read chapter upon chapter upon chapter of, of chapter books. And I was talking to you guys and saying how, you know, this time of year we just kind of start to get a little bit lax in the schoolwork and, um, you know, we're really wrapping things up 
and I start, you know, thinking how there's so much more to school than just like the book learning. And well, guess what we just did for like two hours, an hour before lunch and an hour after lunch. Math, <laughs> tons and tons and tons of math. Was not the intention, but that's just how it ended up working out. Anyway, now Warren and I are alone. We are heading out on just kind of like, I guess a date afternoon. Date afternoon, yeah. yeah. So I think the first stop, where is it? Cranberry Creamery. Cranberry Creamery. We didn't tell the kids that we were gonna go and hopefully they don't watch this video. Because they'll be like, what? You went without us? Cranberry Creamery is so good. It is an ice cream shop in Little Pittsville, Wisconsin. They make all their ice cream right there. Right there. Yeah, and it's just like creamy. It is so delicious. I'm crossing my fingers that they have coconut cookie. Because that's what I'm going to get. If they have it. They change them all the time. What am I getting? What are you getting? No. A vanilla malt. Yes. Well, we've just been cruising all over. I don't know. Warren, I guess, thought he needed a new truck or something. Well. <laughs> Stopped at a car dealership. He was looking at trucks. $100,000. I know. Found out that I don't need a new truck because... $100,000. That's why. Yeah. $100,000. Oh, we got here just in time. Okay. So the kids things. are taking a boating safety class, right? That's yeah. the one it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, boating safety. So we're here to pick up their books. I didn't realize how dark loon eggs are. Oh man, I didn't either. Those. Wow. And look at the goldfinch eggs. Wow, those are tiny. Like a hummingbird. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, if I saw that, I wouldn't even know that was an egg. You know, just laying on the ground. I've seen goose before. I've seen turkey before. I've seen turkey before. Um, mm -hmm. Remember at Powers Bluff, we saw them? Well, I've seen them on our property. Okay. Well, it's a typical date afternoon. <laughs> Actually, it's getting into the evening. Looking at trailers now. They're just all very big. I was going to say. It... Way too big. The one was at least 20 feet. Well, we found a little, like, home and garden, or what do they call it? What's this place called? Like a farm and garden Carrots store? Carrots on farm and home. I don't know. Look at these bird feeders. Cool. Aren't those cool? But do you only put seed in the inside part? Is that supposed to keep the squirrels out? I don't know. I thought these were neat down here. These big tube feeders. Oh, yeah. Like this one right here. Yeah. But look at that. The thistle seed? Yeah. Right? Isn't that the only thing you put in here is thistle seed? I don't know. We're doing exciting stuff like shopping Walmart <laughs> for Rain-X. Date night. Date night rain -X. <laughs> All right, this has been a really hard decision. Really hard decision. $30, $13. $30, Happiness, <laughs> depression. <laughs> Happiness, depression. This one is a lot prettier. Like I said, if I was buying this for you, I would look at that and say, I would be embarrassed <laughs> buying that for you. I would totally go with the red one. It, it's hard. This is hard for me because I don't really know if I'm going to get any more life out of the KitchenAid versus the mainstay. 150 watts. What's that one? Does that have watts on it? Uh, I do not know. Because hmm. this one says 150 watts. Trust me, I think KitchenAid has it figured out. You think KitchenAid? I, I really do. All right, we're going with KitchenAid. Just think how happy you'll be making frosting now. <laughs> I talked Warren into coming into Hobby Lobby now, so we made our way over to the Model Rockets. <laughs> of all the things at Hobby Lobby, huh? Looking at Model Rockets. But we were checking to see if there were things that Peter might 
might want. He wanted to order some, and it's really, really expensive to order model rocket engines and have them shipped because of the explosive quality of them. So anyway. All right, well, we just went to Old Navy and found Peter some shorts. He needs some shorts for a organization that he belongs to. And now we are checking out this brand new store that we never saw before. It's called Sportsman's World, maybe? I don't know where Warren went. He just said, here, just, oh, there he is. <laughs> What's the name of this place called? Sportsman's Warehouse. Warehouse, that's it, Sportsman's Warehouse. Oh, that looks fun. I know, I kind of like to get a community. Holy cow, is that long. It's only 14 and a half feet. Really? Yeah. All right, we're ending the night at a really great restaurant. This is Scotty's, it's called. It's over here. Super good food. Yes, food is incredible. Oh my gosh, my first bite of the salad, this lemon vinaigrette, is amazing. Warren shared a fry. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. This is the best patty melt I've ever had. Really? Mm -hmm. It best, is amazing. Best patty melt ever. I do have books to I know. That's okay. You can finish that at another time. Today's excitement is that it's just me and Maria home right now. It's nice and quiet in the house. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing right now, uh, tomorrow Peter is in an organization that is having a pancake breakfast. And so in our neck of the woods, when there's a pancake breakfast, the sweet pancakes and the sweet syrup <laughs> is not enough. So they ask that we also have desserts. And typically at pancake breakfasts, there are also plates of desserts um, on all of the tables. So I was going to make two different desserts to send along uh, to, with him to the pancake breakfast. I want to make rich cranberry, making sure I get the name right, rich cranberry coffee cake. So this is the recipe that's in my cookbook number two. Yes, cookbook number two on page 52. And it's that recipe right there. Now on the page right before this is a really easy cranberry coffee cake. And it starts with, or a cranberry Bundt cake. It starts with a yellow cake mix, but I used my yellow cake mix the other day to make those pumpkin gems. And so I'm going to do this one um, from scratch. Cream cheese and butter. I actually have that just over here in my KitchenAid right now because it was pretty cold. So what I'm going to do is also make peanut butter swirl bars because that's just such a kid favorite all the time. And I have a lot of crunchy peanut butter right now. And I'm gonna get those mixed in just a separate bowl. And I might, I might use my new mixer. I need a third of a cup of soft butter. All right, so that is a third of a cup. I'm also gonna get another stick put out there right now so it can be soft. There's no, nothing worse when you wanna butter some bread or crackers or something and you have cold butter. And I need a half a cup of peanut butter. Now, you guys, I really don't measure when I'm making this recipe very much because I've just made it so much. And once you start to kind of know what a half a cup looks like, you don't have to measure. And it makes baking so much faster that way. All right, this was the mixer that I went with you guys have been following along, my other mixer completely broke, like stripped out and started going rrr, rrr, rrr. and these started, one was spinning and one wasn't and it was really, really made quite a racket. So this one has a specific one that goes there and then this one goes there. Okay, first time. It is so quiet. I can't believe how quiet this one is. Wow, that is amazing. KitchenAid does have it figured out. <laughs> I'm gonna go a three fourths cup of brown sugar. And three fourths cup of white sugar. All right, I'm 
going to blend in two eggs and a couple teaspoons of vanilla. One cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and a little, one fourth teaspoon of salt. Amazing. One, it mixes so fast. I don't know if it's the shape. I don't know if it's the shape of these beaters. I don't know. That's it, you guys. That's how fast these come together. In one of my last videos, I used this pan, and I had a few people say, I have that same pan, wondering where I got it or something. And I, I don't see any, oh, there is a marking right there. I think it just says two and three fourths by nine by 12 and three fourths or something. I don't think there's any other markings. Do you see any markings on there, Maria? Or oh, maybe that says, yeah, I don't know. I don't see any other markings, no. But I've been baking in this pan. I mean, my mom used this when I was a little girl. If she made chocolate chip cookie bars or she made a cake, this is the pan that it was in. So <laughs> I've had this and I don't know where she got it. I mean, chances are, did she buy it brand new? Chances are not. I would say it could have been like a hand-me-down maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I should ask her sometime. I wonder if she would remember. How are you doing it like that and it's not plugging? Huh? How are you doing it like that and it's not plugging? What's not plugging? You had it flat. Shh. I, I just know how to use it. <laughs> when I do that, I go. <laughs> yeah. And then I go. Shh. Yeah, I got it in my hand. Ah, I got it in my eye. <laughs> I'm not good at spraying. You're not good at spraying? When you were my age, did you know how to cook? Uh, yes. Better than me? I think so. <laughs> yeah. You probably knew that you had to hit the start button for it to actually start working. Well, there was no such thing as an air fryer <laughs> when I was your age, so I didn't know to hit the start button, Maria, because... Well, like, on a thing. The only thing we had like was a stove and an oven. Yeah, you probably knew to hit the start button. I did know to hit the start <laughs> button. Yes, I did. All I have to do is spread out this batter here and then sprinkle one cup of chocolate chips. And I have found with bars, I don't, I don't make a big issue about trying to get the bar uh, dough into all the corners or anything. I just do it good enough and the heat spreads it out I'm making peanut butter swirl bars Maria for Peter to take to the pancake breakfast that looks like one cup to me sprinkle those across the top this is going into the oven at 350 degrees for five minutes I'll take it out I'm going to swirl it with a knife and then we'll put it back in for about another 20 minutes. All right, let's move on to the rich cranberry coffee cake. I have eight ounces of cream cheese and one cup, which is two sticks of butter in here, and I'm gonna get this uh, creamed. It's gonna take a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of push it back down. I'm gonna add one egg at a time, creaming after each one. Whenever I'm making a couple of desserts at a time like this, I always make the dessert that needs to be in the oven for the shortest amount of time first, so I can get that one going, get it in the oven. Usually, by the time I get the next one ready to go, that first one is out of the oven, and then the longer time one can go into the oven. Like today, I'll use that time. Like once I put this in, and this has to go for an, a full hour in the oven, I'll go and do some editing. Two and one fourth cups flour, all purpose flour. 
I was just talking to the camera, it was completely turned off. So I just sprinkled over one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, sprinkled it over top of the flour. And we're gonna do the same with a half a teaspoon of salt. Just sprinkle it. We're gonna get this mixed up. You don't need to whip this too much. You want it to be tender. This is kind, kind of like a pound cake. I'm gonna do two cups of cranberries. And I'm going to break up the walnuts. Let's let some air out of the bag. It says halves and pieces. So we're just gonna kind of bust them up a little bit more. And I only need a half a cup of nuts. I'm just going to eyeball that. And I just barely mixed those in because I didn't want it to overmix. I'm going to get a bunt pan sprayed with the baking flour spray. Someone had mentioned to me in the comments that I would probably like that. I bought some. They have that at Aldi. I did buy a couple cans of it at Aldi and I really like it for things like this. Is that how loud it is when you guys try to get your bunt pan out? Wow. That was perfect timing. This has to go at the same temperature, 350, for one full hour. I just took the rich cranberry coffee cake out of the oven. I did have it in for an extra five minutes, so that was one hour and five minutes at 350. And I'll let that cool because, you know, I want it to come out of the pan nicely. So I'll let it cool for probably, I'd say 12 to 15 minutes. Here are the peanut butter swirl bars. They look delicious, just letting those cool as well uh, so that I could get everything sliced up and ready. You know, since this is a whole bunch of boys, <laughs> that are running the pancake breakfast. I wanna have this as easy as possible for them. I'm gonna have everything sliced, ready for them to put out on their display plates. To see the recipes or to order cookbooks, you can check the description box below. I didn't intend for it to be nearly a week in the life, but that's how it turned out to be. I'll be filming more of these. It's time to wrap the video up. Warren and Joe and I have dance class tonight and pancake breakfast in the morning. I hope that you guys all have a great evening or day, whatever it happens to be where you are. Thanks for watching. Bye.